Hello everyone, welcome back to Haskell Uncut. Today we're going to continue um, the Sokoban program that we started working on. I've done just a couple of, of cleanup operations um, on the code, so it's basically still the same as you saw it before. To go through what I've changed, um, I've changed the exported functions up here. I have um, merged the functions uh, modify world and is valid together. I would like to make a little change on that end later on. Um, and that's pretty much all for the changes that I've done. Oh, and I have uh, cleaned up the, ca the the functions here, where I did the the case empty of empty, and that was stupid of me. Of course, I can just use normal function guards. Um, okay, so today we're going to look at how to create a um, GUI a graphical version of Zokoban. And because I am not very, I don't have a lot of experience with graphic stuff, on the right I have uh, found a file that uses GTK to HS. So it's the GTK um, toolkit, um, and I've, I've played around a little to see that the, the just the rough ideas of displaying an image, translating it, uh, and so on, the game loop, how to do that. But it's really just a test bed, just a sandbox. I haven't done anything on the game, um, so we can we can do that right now. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is um, I would like to split this file, the Sokoban file, because we're going to create a, a graphical version. I would like to split out the things that are only used only for the console version, just to as a separation of concerns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to create a new file, Sokoban console okay and the IO stuff here is only used by that so I move that in here I import Sokoban okay so now let's look through what's needed um, the show world, this we only use in the console version. <laughs> okay, because we would need to, to know the details of the world, I'm actually going to keep that where it was. not perfect but we would need that for debugging anyways so maybe it's not the worst thing to have that in here now these are the functions that we can move out get input and main and also game loop because we have a lot of um, console based stuff in here we're using the console get input we use we're printing the world so I would just recreate the game loop or factor something out if uh, if I do a different version of okay the level we keep in here now we also can see whether the exports that I defined whether they are sufficient for what I want to achieve let's just see if it compiles and it does not compile. Possibly it's because I have to recompile this. OK. 
came and we have the we have the left right issue again so we actually need to keep that in both play places and we need to export the level at least for now I guess I have to change my shortcut here. Okay, and it's compiling. Let's see if it works. Yeah, seems to be working. Okay, so we have the console version and we have the game logic proper with only a limited number of things exported. One more short change that I wanted to make was um, to modify world. The problem that we have here is that it fails silently. So if, if we have an invalid move, it just does nothing silently and I don't really like that. So I'm going to change this here to return nothing in case of an error and to return just the world if it succeeded. Okay, so now we have to change change that here too. Um, so we say just x is x, nothing is world. So this gives us the chance to uh, to do some more reacting, so we could give a little buzz sound if if we have an invalid move or something like that. Let's see if it compiles. It does. Let's just give it a little test run. Okay, it looks good. Okay, and we're ready to uh, to start with the GUI version of this. So, a new file. And we can actually import a couple of things from here, namely those. We will need part of this game loop, so I'll just keep that for reference. So we can leave the print world out. I'll leave the print world out here. Okay, so how do we start? I have on the right here, I have what amounts to like a. Well, I stole a lot of code from here and there from tutorials. And um, so let's see how we start with this. So we have a main and now we just start with the with the necessary things. Oh yeah, we need some libraries. Let's see. So we need K 
Tyro and GTK. Okay. So we'll do window. I mean, it's weird that I'm typing this off, but basically it's for my lack of of knowledge of the GTK toolkit. So I'm just using this like as a reference or as a cheat sheet. Okay. So we say on destroy window main quit. Church all window main GUI. This should probably be a minimal minimal program. So Let's see. And lo and behold, we have a little program here, a uh, little window. I'll have to find out how that works later on. Okay, and what do we... So now we need to get the, the game logic in here somehow. GTK has a self-driven game logic, so that means we need to thread our state through ourselves. So, and what 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 is our state? Of course we have... Um, we have to load the level as part of the state, definitely. So, let's start with the state. So, so we have the, the world. And is there anything else that we have at this state? Probably not. So what we need now is a way to um, keep that state, and we're going to use an mvar. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to define this here. And we need to load the level. Okay. Actually, we're going to change this slightly. We're going to say empty state is state state okay so that worked out just fine and now we want to add some keyboard events for the input so the way this works um, oh actually we want to add a draw which do we want to start first Let's add some keyboard events. So that is window on key press event. So we have function handle keyboard. And 
we have this very strange uh, notation that GTK uses. It takes some real getting used to. So let's. Um, Let's get the keyboard codes. That's a little bit of a challenge. So it's the type of map and So it's a very strange nomenclature. Basically, this line where I'm right here, it's a guard. So the next thing gets only executed if um, if actually the left key is pressed. So. Window and handle keyboard. Yeah. Okay, very true. There wasn't a window to do this on. So I'll just try this, press the left key and it works. And I press other keys also shows that. So I'll probably have to write this as a proper guard. and control moment. Let's see if this works. Left. No, it's not working. Okay. So, so much for my little sandbox. That didn't work at all. That did not work at all.
Hmm. Okay, I'll just I'll just do the evil version of this. If x equals left, then lift IO do. Okay, so does this work now? No, it does not. Well, fantastic. Okay, let's. I, I just have to see the key value from me. I'm not very impressed by GTK. It's. Uh, I will try key val name. Wonder if that's going to work. Okay, what does key val name? What's the type? Okay, I really hope this would run much better. Keep our name, that's IO. left and it shows left. Okay, so successful workaround. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, and what I actually want to do is I give it a state. And uh, so now I need something else. I want to add something here, which is I want to put the input here, if any.
OK. And then if, if left is pressed, then I'm going to modify M bar state. Yeah, I think I, I need a helper function. Uh, but let me just let me just put that in here. This is all a bit confusing. I'll I'll uh, comment on a, on it in a second. Why? I'll keep this for later. Why isn't this working? Okay, because I need this state here. Okay, so I'll try pressing the left button. Okay, now nothing happens. But it should be setting this. Okay, I'm going to do a little helper. Actually, This whole thing is the helper.
for this. It's working. Okay, that should be that. Let's see if it compiles. Okay. So I've got my keyboard handling down. I'm using, I'm, I'm writing it into, ah, oh, there. Still have a little mistake. Okay, so what do we have? We have our state. We have our keyboard event. And now I would love to draw something. Okay, so let's do that. So we have this expose event, which means that Okay, so whenever we need to draw, then we call the function draw window. And draw window for now receives the window and the state variable. Oh yeah, and I want to set it a certain way. I want to make my window a certain size. So this is just saying that uh, when the window is asked what size it wants to be, that it replies 800 by 600. Um, and we want the draw window, it gets the window and the state. Let's see how we did that here. Um, just the minimum then this is probably the minimum and then we need to load a text at a, at a picture let me just look for something So, just for the sake of it, um, what 
I have in the images folder is a couple of images that we can use. And let's just use the grass block PNG. Okay, and let's see what's happening now. Let me just find an example of this. It's really difficult to find good examples for GTK. It should work like this. What is the error it gives me? Forty four. Let's just see if we can find uh, the documentation for that one. So a path and a function. <sighs> okay, no, forget about this. We're not going to use this anyway. And then at the end of it, we need to destroy the image again. Probably that's why this didn't work. As you can see, this is giving me a lot of trouble just getting my head around the GTK. 
loads of strange data types. is we can make the game actually um, keyboard driven, input driven. So I can actually put some extra things here to drive the game forward. Um, just just to, to test whether things are going the right way. I'm going to add something to the world state here. S offset. And again, this is not going to work. Okay, I'll have to write this out and um, this is really Resort. And if this doesn't work, then I'll just write it all out. As you can see, as soon as we go into these GUI. Um, Elements. Things become much more complicated. Yeah, I guess we have to write this out.
Okay. And now, whenever the key was pressed, we want to update the, the world. And um, and redraw, really. So, what we want to do is we still have our game loop up here. I'm gonna pull that down. Okay. And now what I want to do is um to and then I want to ask to redraw okay I'll actually pass the window in here so I can give pass the window over here. Actually, I don't need that. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see if this compiles. Okay. So, I wanted to use the offset. So just to test this, so I'm just saying we have an offset value, and here. So I'm actually going to draw this with the offset. Let's see. So every time I, pr I press a key, this should move. Perfect. So now we can take the offset off out here again because we've seen that it works. It was just a gimmick. Okay, let's see that everything's still working. Fantastic. So, whenever a key is pressed, we put the input in, we update the world, and we ask to, to redraw. So now the only thing that needs to work is this draw window thing here. Um, instead of the grass block, Let's take the character boy. And now what we actually do is take the state. actually just pass the input over to the update world in the first place.
Okay, I think I'm almost ready to do this now. So whenever a key is pressed, the world is updated. And uh, it's asked to be redrawn. So what we do here is So now we have the world, and in the world we have the coordinates of our character. So Okay, and here we can see that I absolutely need all inf information about the world, so I'm actually going to go here and open this up. W worker. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, so let's see. For some reason, let's see. Read the world, modify world based on input. Ah, I know why. Because you can only move up. Let's see if this works. Fantastic. Already works. The only thing we can't see is the level. And now we have to 
now we have to print the level. Let's see what these images, what size they are. So they are 171 high. So what, what does that mean? What size are they actually? Let's say they are 100 by 85. Let's say tiles are Okay, I need to load the tiles. Okay, so here we have the tiles.
Okay, what's the issue now? state tiles <sighs> I don't really know what the problem is here Okay. Okay, so we have the long strings, we have the map M, and then we do a
Where do I find lift IO? I'm sorry for not commenting more. Um, just at the moment, it's a little bit frustrating. I had hoped to. Just hope to get on better and faster. Okay. Mm. Now pass the tires again. Okay, still have the boy, the boy still moves. <sighs> okay, now I want to draw the walls. Let's start with the walls. Let's take stone block for the wall. And then Map M.
Okay, now we need the X part of this. Okay, so I guess we have to call the paint function. Let's see if this works now. Very cool. Very cool. Just need to. And then we're as good as done. Very cool. Very cool. Now the problem that we have is that this whole thing is basically works but I need to scale it so let's see if we can scale something by writing scale 0 0.5 Getting there. So that's our level. So what do we want to show? X, Y.
Um, Okay, we're almost there. Jam blue. Okay, so we've got the crates as well. They're all in wrong order, so I could just reverse them if I was really lazy. Okay, and now we're really getting to the point where we have a playable game. Fantastic. Still a little flickery, but it's working. Okay, so now we just have the storages. Then we want I uh, wanted to take the image selector. Okay, and now we should have a playable game. Okay, just so have a copy paste error there. Selector. <sighs> Let's see. Very cool. As I said, we need to put a lot of emphasis on the ordering of these. But I think it's pretty apparent that we have a playable game. Okay, so I need to give a good look into how to make this flicker less and then we can add cool features like undo and things like that 
but basically we're all done and it says finished at the bottom fantastic okay thank you so much for your uh, patience and watching this I'll put the code up on github and see you next time at Haskell Uncut. <laughs>